Hello everybody, this is Alex from SoyaChincha.com and this is a brand new series where we talk about what matters in the telco sector. In this video, we're going to talk about 5G, what's taking Malaysia so long to get 5G off the ground and what is a single wholesale network. This and more in this episode. Before I continue, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed of our future videos. This is a bi-weekly series, so please drop your comments and suggestions on what we should cover next. And now, on to the show. 5G is the next generation for mobile communications and we've come a long way from the days of 2G, 3G and even the current 4G technology. The biggest promise of 5G is not just about gigabit speeds but also low latency which enables real-time applications and the capacity to support even more connected devices including IoT and enterprise solutions. 5G is not just about watching 1080p videos on YouTube but also to enable and transform new things like smart cities, robotics, remote surgery, AR, VR and even autonomous vehicles. Malaysia's 5G journey actually started a couple of years ago. In 2019, several telcos including Maxis and Cellcom have launched 5G live trials in selected areas in Cyberjaya and Petalin Jaya. Later that year, the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, the MCMC, have even launched a 5G demonstration project which showcases 55 use cases in six states. And on 1st January 2020, the MCMC announced that Malaysia's 5G spectrum will be awarded to a single entity that's formed by multiple licensees. So instead of giving the 5G spectrum to individual telcos like Cellcom, DG, Maxis, U-Mobile, Telcom Malaysia and YTL Communications, it's going to be given to a single consortium. Meanwhile, the higher millimeter wave bands like 26 and 28 gigahertz can be awarded to specific licensees. To address concerns of being a monopoly, the MCMC said that multiple consortiums can submit the bid if they can fulfill the criteria but only one will be selected. The MCMC explained that the single entity approach will help to lower capital expenditure by minimizing costs and to prevent duplication of infrastructure. Assigning the 5G spectrum to a single entity also ensures a more effective use of spectrum versus each charcoal having a small chunk. According to the 5G Task Force report, it is estimated that the overall cost to upgrade the existing networks to 5G will cost around 7.5 billion ringgit. If everything went according to the plan, the 5G spectrum was supposed to be assigned by Q2 2020 with commercial availability targeted for Q3 2020. And Malaysia at that time was seen as a forerunner in the 5G race. And as we all know, this happened. Very well. Okay. That the government had effectively collapsed. So is, is, is Pakatan Harapan over? I think so. Pakatan Harapan is over? I think so. Tuanku telah bersetuju menerima surat peletakan jawatan saya dan setelah itu menitah saya supaya menjadi Perdana Menteri Interim. The Pakatan Harapan administration fell and so did the ministers including Goh Bing Sin. Out of that, 5G was essentially up in the air. In August 2020, the then Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin announced the Jendela plan which is aimed at improving 4G access, increased fiberization and also to shut down 3G by the end of 2021. And yep, there was no mention of 5G at all and remember that we are supposed to have 5G commercial services by Q3 2020. A few months later in November, the then Communications and Multimedia Minister Saifuddin Abdullah told Parliament that the focus at the time was on strengthening existing 4G networks under Jendela. He said there's no point of having 5G in selected areas where rural areas are struggling to get 4G. He shared that 5G deployment in Malaysia will take place towards the end of 2022 or early 2023 after achieving specific connectivity targets. Berbalik kepada 5G, pada kita, kita akan roll out dengan izin 5G ini uh, pada tak hujung tahun 2022 atau pada awal 2023, kita ada 5G di setengah-setengah tempat tetapi di kawasan pedalaman luar bandar, 4G pun tak ada dan sebagainya. That's two more years! Then in February 2021, almost a year after the new government came to power, 5G is back on the table when Muidin launched My Digital. However, the plan now is very different as the government wants the 5G implementation to be handled by a special purpose vehicle that's owned by the Ministry of Finance. In short, the government now wants to get their hands into the telco business and this SPV is now known as Digital National Berhad. And this is a single wholesale network where the government will build a national network while other telcos will gain 5G access to it 
through a wholesale agreement. The Ministry of Finance has hired a bunch of veterans like Ralph Marshall, who is a former top executive for Maxis and Astro, while the chairman is Dato Asri Hamidon, the Treasury Secretary General at the Ministry of Finance. You also get familiar faces including former MCMC chairman Dato Mohammad Sharil Tamizi and former Maxis CEO Morton Lundahl on the board. No doubt, DMB has some of the most seasoned telco veterans to run the show. A few months later, DMB appointed Ericsson as their 5G vendor out of a total of four bidders. According to them, Ericsson was ranked top in three key components, namely technical, commercial, and social economic factors. At the time, DMB said it cost 11 billion to design, build, and maintain a 5G network by Ericsson, and is around 700 million lower than the total cost of ownership of the next closest bid. To break it down, Ericsson's network equipment and network management costs 4 billion ringgit, while the balance 7 billion ringgit will cover network infrastructure costs such as tower rental and fiber leasing for a period of over 10 years. In an interview with the Star in November 2021, the CEO Ralph Marshall said that the total cost of deployment is expected to be around 16.5 billion ringgit. 12.5 billion ringgit will be spent on the network, while 4 billion will be spent on corporate costs, which include startup costs, consultation fees, and staff compensations for 10 years. He said the total cost may swell up to 20 billion ringgit between 2025 and 2030 to anticipate significant increase in capacity demand in the future. Malaysia's approach to deploy 5G through digital national Berhad has attracted a lot of criticism and concerns. GSMA, the organization which represents the telco industry, has highlighted the potential risks and challenges of deploying 5G through a single wholesale network. According to a paper released by GSMA Intelligence, some countries have tried the SWN model with the expectation that it will achieve better coverage than the traditional deployment that's based on market competition. However, history has shown that the model is risky and has shown very little success. Some of the failed examples include Belarus, Rwanda, and most recently Mexico, where the single wholesale network was declared bankrupt after failing to hit its coverage targets. Most recently in South Africa, the government has scrapped plans to launch its own single wholesale network and they've already begun auctioning its 4G and 5G spectrum in the hope to increase competition. Several politicians and industry analysts have raised concerns about the transparency and potential rise in costs if Malaysia continues with the single wholesale network model. Based on a poor track record of successful implementation, GSMA has also called upon the MCMC to share the regulatory impact assessment to outline the costs and benefits of implementing an SWN. Late last year, the MCMC even changed the terms of the existing spectrum which prevents telcos from using whatever spectrum they have for 5G and beyond. So eventually, this will reduce opportunities for telcos to innovate and their roles will be reduced to just mobile virtual network operators. Tiger spectrum yang dikhususkan uh, untuk 5G dan eksklusifly dikendalikan oleh DNB. Sementara spektrum lain yang sedang digunakan secara teknikalnya juga sememangnya boleh digunakan untuk 5G. Cuma kalau diberikan kebebasan atas prinsip spektrum neutrality atau technology neutrality, hmm. dia akan menjejaskan konsep single wholesale network. Itu saja asasnya. Technically memang boleh dilakukan. Uh, tapi aspek ini juga sedang kita 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 visit. Yeah. Dan kita telah meninjau konsep-konsep uh, yang dipakai oleh semua negara-negara lain. Tapi pada masa ini, kerana kita mahukan satu kapasiti yang cukup tinggi, maka tiga spektrum itu dikhususkan untuk 5G, sementara spektrum yang lain digunakan untuk 4G dan kita tutup 3G. Yeah. Dan kita membiarkan sebahagian spektrum yang terlibat dengan 2G. Uh, kita merasakan kaedah begitu uh, menjamin efisiensi yang lebih baik tetapi dia pula ada kekangan lain di mana dia menghalang pemegang-pemegang apa tu spektrum uh, yang lain daripada tiga spektrum ini daripada menggunakannya untuk tujuan 5G. Jadi itu saja yang mungkin uh, boleh kita tengok secara lebih mendalam. According to DMB as well as the Ministry of Finance, the single wholesale network model is the best way forward to accelerate the deployment of 5G as they're running on a cost recovery model. It claims that with their supply-driven approach, nobody will be left behind as they will build the network even in places with insufficient demand. Since DMB is the only party to build the 5G network, it will have all the 5G spectrum required and it promises to provide telcos a cost-effective way to offer 5G services to consumers. The government also said that DMB will be highly regulated by the MCMC and they will be treated like any other telco. This is to ensure open, fair and equal access to the 5G network. Some believe this approach can ensure better quality of service to consumers considering that 
4G networks aren't that great. But here's the thing, all telco simulation right now are regulated by the MCMC. They all have to comply with the Communications and Multimedia Act or else they can be subjected to fines and penalties. So can MCMC regulate a government entity better than private companies? In November last year, Finance Minister Tengku Dato Sri Zafro told Parliament that the previous plan to roll out 5G through a private-led consortium had failed due to differences of interest by mobile network operators. He said the efforts by telcos to share the network infrastructure, reduce costs and launch 5G didn't go according to plan. Daripada menganugerahkan jalur spektrum emergency kepada pemegang lesen individu, laporan akhir SKMM menyokong pemberian jalur lebar ini kepada konsortium tunggal yang dibentuk di kalangan pemegang lesen. Walau bagaimanapun disebabkan perbezaan kepentingan di antara kalangan operator rangkaian muda alih, usaha untuk berkongsi rangkaian menjimatkan kos dan melancarkan 5G tidak berlaku seperti yang diharapkan. But we all know that that's not true. As we've mentioned earlier in the video that the MCMC actually announced the Spectrum and also the consortium approach in January 2020 and the government was changed in the following month. So the previous 5G plan didn't even have the chance to take off and the actual delay was caused by the current government which only decided to talk about 5G one year after taking over. Has he forgotten what Saifuddin said in parliament a year ago? Pada kita, kita akan roll out dengan izin 5G ini uh, pada tak hujung tahun 2022 atau pada awal 2023. We've seen telcos such as Maxis, Cellcom, TM and DG conducting 5G network sharing trials and signing agreements to share fiber infrastructure. Cellcom and Maxis even completed a 5G Mokan trial in Langkawi which was one of the first of its kind in Southeast Asia. On concerns about telcos ignoring rural areas, well the government can possibly set as a condition along with the spectrum allocation. And also there's something called the Universal Service Provision Fund, USP, where telcos actually contribute 6% of their revenue on an annual basis. The fund is meant to pay for telecommunications projects in areas where it's not economically feasible. According to the 2020 annual report by the MCMC, there's 10 billion ringgit in the fund. <sighs> okay, so let's come back to the present time. So Digital National Berhad has launched their 5G network in the middle of December 2021, covering selected areas in Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya and Cyberjaya. And it aims to achieve 40% 5G population coverage by the end of 2022 and 80% by the end of 2024. As an introductory offer, DMB is offering telcos who are willing to sign up for their 5G pilot free access until 31st of March 2022. Only two telcos have taken up the offer, namely YTL Communications and Telecom Malaysia. But until today, YTL's Yes 5G is the first and only telco to offer commercial 5G services to consumers. TM, which was one of the first to announce support for DMB, has yet to introduce any unified mobile 5G plans until today. Initially, they put a tiny teaser that is coming in February, but now it's already end of March and we ain't seeing anything. What's missing in the picture are the big four telcos such as Cellcom, DG, Maxis and U-Mobile. The big four have been holding back from signing with DMB, which is bad news for the wholesale provider. How are they going to secure more financing if they don't have the biggest telcos on board? After much criticism and probably due to reluctance of big telcos to sign up, the current communications and multimedia minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa announced in December last year that the government is reconsidering the single wholesale network model under DNB. In February, the Big Four Telcos issued a joint statement proposing to the government to allow a second 5G network formed by a consortium of telcos. According to them, having a dual wholesale network will leverage existing telco infrastructure, resources and experience of technical talents to provide a win-win situation. This will provide a network redundancy for 5G which will prevent a single point of failure. However, on 16 March, both the Communications and Multimedia Ministry and the Ministry of Finance have jointly announced that Malaysia has decided to continue with the single wholesale network. Kerajaan telah memutuskan untuk mengekalkan pelaksanaan rangkaian dan infrastruktur 5G negara yang berpandukan bekalan dan berdasarkan pemulihan kos melalui rangkaian borong tunggal ataupun single wholesale network. To resolve the stalemate, the government is willing to reduce its stake in DMB from 100% to 30% allowing the telcos to acquire an equity of 70%. Obviously, the telcos issued a statement that they welcome the announcement and they look forward to discussing with the relevant ministries on the next steps moving forward. DME has also extended its free 5G access offer until the middle of this year to ease the transition for telcos. Most recently, the big four telcos has released another statement last week and they are open to explore the equity stake with a mergers and acquisition process. What's frustrating is that we haven't been making much progress. 
Yes, it's still the only telco to offer 5G services. And in the region, we've already been beaten by our neighbors who have launched 5G ahead of us. According to Open Signal's recent report, our average mobile speeds in Malaysia is 13.5 megabits per second and it lags behind Thailand, Indonesia and the Philippines. We used to be better than them, but they've overtaken us because of 5G. In terms of accessibility, there are plenty of 5G phones in the market, including the entry-level segment. So that's it for now for the latest developments of 5G in Malaysia. So what do you think of the current situation? Is single hosted network a better way forward considering no country has done it successfully? Can Malaysia set an example of a successful single hosted network model? Can DMB deliver a 5G experience better than the current 4G telcos? Let us know in the comments down below. This is Alex from SoyChinchan.com. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.